Hi, I'm Mary Kopsinski, the CEO of Regolytics, with your update on 13,706 regulatory alerts. The regulator of the week is the White House. One, the jobs report came out announcing the economy had created 336,000 jobs in September, which is pretty good. Two, the Biden-Harris administration also announced that official negotiations started between Medicare and the manufacturers of 10 specific drugs directly. This is a practice that has formerly been barred, typically lobby against, lobbied against heavily by Big Pharma, but the Inflation Reduction Act allowed it. So we'll see how this shapes the cost of health care for both the patients on the drugs and also the manufacturers of them. Three, this week, President Biden announced an additional $9 billion in student debt relief for 125,000 people. How he did that, despite the re recent court case that invalidated his previous forgiveness, I don't know, but he is indeed a fighter. The topic of the week, er, person, and you know me, I love it when celebrities show up in my alerts feed, and this time it's entrepreneur celebrity Elon Musk. He'll probably never remember, but once, many years ago, when he was the CEO of Zip2, I met him at a pool party in Los Gatos. But unlike the pool party, Elon did not show up to his SEC hearing about his recent purchase of Twitter and the SEC has tried multiple times to coordinate an appropriate location to get him on the record, and he keeps not showing. So they officially filed an order this week demanding that he show. Is it really that important? It's certainly not surprising, but it is interesting to see normally very boring humdrum alerts play out against people who do appear and act as though they are above the normally very boring humdrum rule of law. Ideally, in America, the rules apply, you know, equal protection under the law, but this rise of these powerful and very public figures that maybe in the olden days would just do hush-hush things to make it go away, are very openly questioning the authority of these institutions. And it does make me nervous. Moving on to other stuff. I'm going global to local global. Bank of International Settlements, which is basically the regulator of all the global banks in the world, completed their assessment of the recent banking crisis and had their big, big meeting, and these are the decisions that came out of it. Number one, they have agreed to consult on climate-related financial exposure and crypto assets. Two, they put out their scenarios for the big monster banks to model and present to ensure that our global financial system is safe. Also global, the European Banking Association has published its priorities for 2024. One, capital requirements. Two, interest rates and whether they're being managed properly. Three, data infrastructure. Four, DORA and MICAR. DORA is the Digital Operational Resilience Act, and MICAR is the Markets Crypto Assets Regulation. Five, innovation, access to financial services, and AML KYC. So there you go. That's your preview of what every European bank is going to care about next year. Still on global, the Central Bank of the Bahamas is considering if they need a better digital infrastructure other than checks, like paper checks. I think so. Okay, here in the US, the Federal Reserve did a study and found that fintechs are basically popping up where they can charge massively high interest rates and skirt state and federal rules against usury. The FTC released a report that shows consumers have lost 2.7 billion in scams since 2021 most of which are coming up as Facebook and Instagram ads. So you can imagine what is coming next for all social media companies. And last but not least, you know I love AI and health. Well, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is hosting a very interesting webinar where you can learn from two government-funded researchers 
who are using machine learning and automation to find new treatments for pain and opioid use disorder. That's it this week for Regolytics. Join me every Wednesday for your dose of regulatory news.